one still up? Uh, yeah, it's not hooked up. Okay. I have to turn it on back here. Altimeter 2993. Visual approach in use, landing and departing, runway 17 right and 17 left. Caution, mowers working in the vicinity of runways and taxiways. Advise control on initial contact, you have Mike. Sphinx Tower, ATIS information, Mike. 1455 Zulu observation, wind 180 at 13, gusting 18, visibility 10, ceiling 2400 broken. Temperature 22, dew point 18, altimeter 2993. Visual approach in use, landing and departing, runway 17 right and 17 left. Caution, mowers working in the vicinity of runways and taxiways. Advise control on initial contact, you have Mike. Sphinx Tower, ATIS information, Mike. 1455 Zulu observation, wind 180 at 13, gusting 18, visibility 10, ceiling 2400 broken. Temperature 22, dew point 18, altimeter 2993. Visual approach in use, landing and departing, runway 17 right and 17 left. Okay, Caution, let's uh, start taxiing. Runways and taxiways. Advise control okay. and initial contact, you have Mike. Sphinx Tower, ATIS information, Mike. 1455 Zulu observation, wind 180 at 13, gusting 18, visibility 10, 2400 broken. Temperature 22, dew point okay, 18, out under 2, Okay, we need our over for that wind. By a way, because it's behind us. Right left. Caution, mowers working in the vicinity of runways and taxiways. Advise control on initial contact, you have Mike. Sphinx Tower, ATIS information, Mike. 1455 Zulu observation, wind 180 at 13, gusting 18, visibility 10, ceiling 2400 broken. Okay, now I'll try to do it. 18, altimeter 2993. Visual approach in use, landing and departing, runway 17 right and 17 left. Caution, mowers working in the vicinity the power of the runway taxiways. Advise control on initial contact, you have Mike. Sphinx Tower, ATIS information, Mike. 1455 Zulu turn more into wind, the wind right here. 13, gusting 18, visibility 10, ceiling okay. 2400 broken. Uh, let's go through 2, our 2, run up. 18, altimeter 2993. Brakes on. Brakes on. Oh, here you don't need any rudder pedals. As much as heavy, heavy heel. Minor fluctuation with RP. Uh, uh, oil pressure. Uh, temperature. How long does it take for temperature to come up on this? Uh, to, it'll be a little bit, but okay. it'll get there. Up to under 700. <laughs> Ram slightly nose up. Yep, right. Back to okay. I'm going to call ground and uh, get our clearance. Spinks ground to Rocky 1800 on the east side, ready to taxi with Mike. Okay, 1800, Springs Ground, runway 17 right, taxi via taxiway Charlie. Hold short, runway 17 left. 17 right via Charlie, hold 17 left, uh, Rocky 1800. Okay, so, they spoke, gave us the runway in use. 17 right, 17 right. taxiway to get there. Charlie. Off the brakes. And hold on the 17 left. Always going to be the same. Runway in use, taxiways to get there, and any crosser old shorts are walking away. Cross number 17 left at Charlie. Cross 17 left at Charlie. Rock 800.
Okay. Wind is off of our left, high into it. So we keep that aileron down. Where you want to be careful in the wind, not going too fast. Okay. Especially if it's a strong wind. And what's a strong wind? Uh, anything, anything that scares anything. the hell out of you. Yeah. Like sometimes when my wife, she looks at me when we're flying and I says, you only got to get scared when I get scared. Now we can get a little closer. Just don't want that nose over the yellow lines. Okay. Okay. There you go. I can see where I use from, for myself as a reference, I can see yellow lines on this side, yellow lines on this side, and they're at the bottom of the dash corners. Yes. To me back here. Where are they to you? They're right here. On both sides. Okay. Right so it's a good reference to get used to seeing those lines given the nose is up. Okay? Okay. So the tower here. Yeah, Springs Tower, Rock A1800, holding 17 right for a west departure. Rock A1800, Springs Tower, only 17 right, clear for takeoff, right turn out approved. Clear for takeoff, right turn approved, Rock A00. Okay, on a crosswind day like today, here's where we're going to do a normal takeoff. We're not going to slingshot. So we're going to do a you know, slow acceleration. Get used to feeling what that crosswind's really doing to you. Okay. Come on out. Nice and slow. There's nobody in our pattern. So we can uh, really work at this. Okay, now the wind is off of our right, so we need the right aileron. And we also then need to get on the center line. Now let's start advancing our power. So just be your toes or the balls of your feet on those rudder pedals. Okay, start advancing the power a little more. See how we roll the tails up? See how we're holding it right here? It wants to lift into that wind. You can come back with the stick a little bit. Advance your power. Let's see, this is a crosswind control. See how we held the center line? Yes. Now we got to give to that wind. Since we came out here, the wind has changed 10 degrees. Since the time we got the airplane out till we're leaving. It's about 180. That means it's about 10 degrees off of our center line of our runway. It's your airplane. My airplane. There you go. Leave it about 10 degrees to the right. Now think about making small movements for wind. Looking clear on the right, we're 1300, make a right hand turn, watch that wind now, we're going to really feel it when it uh, gets under that left wing. Now that wind's going to try pushing us north all the time. So let's pretend we're going at that water tower way out there. Okay. Climbing the 2,500 feet. 
now. Hold everything in balance here and then try to hold it. Goes up a little, we're doing eight. What's that? We're doing 80 miles an hour. You got to get the nose up to climb. Now look at how much the center line of the airplane is pointing off to the southwest and we're trying to go at that water tower. You really got to work on keeping the ball in the center, because if you don't, you're exposing the side too much. I think I'm fixating on looking out, and I'm not looking around. Else. Yep. Just keeping your balance to the horizon. You can see how much the horizon disappears out there, so there's all that haze and everything. That's all that weather that's coming for tomorrow. You can also see where they said the visibility is less than 10. Yes. Just saying maybe a plus 6. Now, it's not too bad over here to the practice area, but now you start looking down to Cleburne, which is down to our, about our 10 o'clock. Okay, let's go more towards the practice area. Allow that wind to just move you right around. Turn you like a helicopter. Now we should have more of a wind right to our side. Okay, let's level off at 2,500. Goes down a little more. Yeah, you gotta fix this cord up. It's ridiculous. We get that power down, huh? 2300? Yeah, about halfway back through the arc. Hold the wings level. Not going too fast to for forward, are we? But we're going plenty sideways. Just hold it level. Try not to go any more in altitude. Okay. All that wind's giving us a lot of lift. You're going to see the gap on the front end there be greater than what it usually is. and power. We're going down to it. We got a large airspeed. Good. Now let go of the airplane one. What does the airplane do? Throw your hands up. Throw your hands up. What does the airplane want to do? Even in this wind. Hold it, mate. That ain't pretty good. Yeah, sometimes we're our own worst enemy. We find ourselves bobbling around, looking like a freaking bobblehead. Yeah. Stop, you know. Throw your hands up and see, is it me or the airplane or the winds? Okay. 
Let's bring our power down. Close up. 31 power to. Let's just start to slow down. Okay. Feel the weight of the airplane now. Having to hold it up here. But also feel. 60 miles an hour indicated, but we're just about stopped. Let's go down to 50. Fifty miles an hour indicated and we are barely, barely moving. Agreed? Agreed. So if you were trying to get to somewhere today, you better be planning on a longer time and a more of a fuel consumption. If we try going on the Chisholm Trail, cars will be passing us up like crazy. <laughs> but we could Cars are passing us up on the city streets down there. Yeah. We're not even on, the, which are doing 70 on there. Maybe 50, 60 on the city streets. But you can see, we're, like we could be up here for the next hour and not get to the Chisholm Trail. Just to understand what the winds are doing to us. Okay? Let's hold this altitude, get back to 2300. We'll go out in the practice area and see what it's really doing to us. up a little bit so we're not descending more. Now we're only, what, 300 feet from uh, what they were predicting, forecasting the winds to be at 3,000, right? 33 knots? Yes. Okay. I don't expect we're going to see so many people up here. Now, we got to maintain 500 feet below the clouds here. So it looks like we're going to be banging them at uh, 28, 29 feet. Yeah. Okay. So we can just test the winds here. Let's go in a standard rate turn to the left. Looking clear on our left. Just a basic turn. Okay, looking down, we're over the, we're turning, we got this rectangular field with rows in it. Yes. Feel the wind, how much it's gra yeah. grabbing us now? Pushing us to the northeast. We're still in the same bank, but because we're not glued to the ground, the wind's pushing us. I really feel as we get the tailwind how much more we accelerate. We're going right back to 1187 down here like nothing.
Look at back at where Greenfield is. Not yeah, anywhere near it now, are we? Uh, it's pushing the big down. Okay, so knowing that, let's go downstairs. I don't, we're down to about 1500. Let's go downstairs. This power line here going out to the west is going to be. Our course line. Okay. We'll continue a spiraling descent down to about 1,700 feet. We're 90 miles an hour and can't get back to our field. Because that wind keeps pushing us back to the northeast. So, let's bring it around to the right. Is there a mic? Runway 17 right, clear for takeoff. Okay, let's intercept those power lines. Now you can see going to the north, we can get back there pretty quick, can't we? Yes. So if we turn and try to just keep our longitudinal line over that power line, just get your wings level, some level. So it's taking a lot of crap to stay over that line. So now we're going to move it out here a little bit. See if we can at least hold a distance. Also, remember it was gusting? Yes, sir. When you're setting up a course line for a cross country or trying to go to somewhere, look at what it's taking to go down this line. Going to Zero Echo Mike, contact regional departure. Have a good flight. Order to departure, we'll see you later. Zero Echo Mike. Okay, let's hold an altitude. Let, uh, let go of your airplane once. What does it want to do? Bomb. It's not. It's only to aid you, not to actually set the airplane up. Say that again. It's only an aid. It is not a flight instrument. So you just want to see if you got it relatively close. But if you find yourself doing this all the time, stop and check and see what the airplane. If you're inducing it. Again, sometimes we're our own worst enemy. I forgot to turn my headset on, I could barely hear you. Now let's hold this all the way across this open area. And hold it level. Okay. Point being, imagine if you had to do this for the next hour and a half to get to somewhere.
Right now our ground speed is about 62 knots according to four flight. About a 2018 knot headwind. Yeah. Now you can look on the ground, look at some of the waves of the grass and everything.